Hi, I'm Kevin and I'll be reporting on our effort to implement a protocol for certified random number generation using the Sycamore chip. This project is being done in collaboration with NIST. So randomness is a valuable resource with many applications. Usually when we need random numbers, we just call a random number generator on our computers and we don't worry too much about whether the numbers are truly random or unpredictable. But there are some situations, for example, in cryptography or lotteries where true randomness would be desirable. In classical physics, there is no true randomness because the physical laws are deterministic. On the other hand, quantum systems exhibit true randomness. Here is a quantum circuit which, if executed correctly, produces an unbiased coin flip. The outcome of this experiment cannot be predicted with certainty, even in principle. Now, the issue with this method of generating random numbers is that the user has no way to tell that the alleged quantum device is not backdoored by the NSA, who is actually just giving you a bunch of bits that it chose in advance. What's needed is a way to certify that the random bits were actually generated by the claimed process. It turns out that this is actually possible. There have been previous proposals as well as actual implementations. While I won't review those, I'll just say that the use case we have in mind is that of a user accessing our near-term quantum computer through the internet and being able to verify the certification themselves. And previous proposals don't work in this scenario. Unlike some previous proposals, our, pro our protocol depends on a computational hardness assumption. This protocol was first proposed by Scott Aronson, and I'm just reporting our efforts to implement it with some slight modifications. I'll also mention that these protocols are more properly referred to as randomness expansion since they require a small initial random seed. The starting point for our protocol is our experiment from last year where we performed a classically intractable computation on our Sycamore chip. The task we performed is easy to describe. We generated a random quantum surrogate on 53 qubits with 20 layers of single qubit and two qubit gates. Then we sampled the circuit on the quantum computer to obtain bit strings. This sampling task is easy for a quantum computer, but we believe it's hard for classical computers. To validate the performance of our device, we performed a test on the bit strings we got. We simulated the quantum circuit to compute the ideal bit string probabilities. If our device was working correctly, then many of the bit strings should have high associated probabilities. Now, of course, we couldn't do this for the truly intractable circuit. So what we actually did was we tweaked the circuit slightly to make it feasible to simulate and then validated our device using those easier circuits. And this gave us confidence that our device was also working correctly for the original circuit. I want to emphasize here that the choice of qubit number, depth, and circuit tweaks allows us to adjust the classical difficulty of the sampling task and its verification. Now I'll give the computational assumption underlying our protocol. Here is the problem. Given a random quantum circuit, approximately sample from its output distribution. The assumption we make is that solving this problem in a short amount of time is only possible by actually executing and sampling the circuit on a quantum computer. Furthermore, the output can be verified with statistical tests, including the linear cross entropy fidelity which is the average of the probability values multiplied by the Hilbert space dimension minus one. It turns out that this is an estimate of the fidelity of the sampling. Also note that for large circuits, the sampled bit strings should be unique. The assumption of sampling on a quantum computer implies that true randomness is generated. Now I can explain the protocol. First, the client generates a number of random circuits. Then, in each round of the protocol, the client sends one of the circuits to the server and demands a response within a short amount of time. In the honest case, the response is just a list of bit strings obtained by sampling the circuit on the quantum computer. Next, the client chooses a subset of the responses and calculates the bit string probabilities on the classical computer and uses them to compute the fidelity. Note that this step is computationally expensive. The client checks that the fidelity is high enough and does other statistical tests on the bit strings. 
If the checks pass, then the client concatenates all the bit strings and runs them through a randomness extractor, which is like a hash function, to produce near uniformly random output bits. Again, note that unfortunately, the verification step is expensive since it involves simulating the circuits. However, the key point is that the server is required to respond in seconds or minutes while the client can do the verification offline, taking a lot more time. In our implementation, we focused on exercising the software infrastructure needed to execute this protocol through the internet. In particular, we used fully automatic calibration of our processor. Due to temporary limitations in the automatic calibration procedure, so far we have not achieved experimental parameters that would provide true certification of randomness. However, we're confident that we'll achieve those parameters in the future. For now, I'm just going to be candid with you and tell you what we did manage to achieve. We generated circuits on 23 qubits with 14 cycles. We sampled each circuit a million times. And in doing so, we achieved an effective sampling rate of 3.8 kilohertz. This includes the latency of communicating through the internet. We got a linear cross entropy fidelity of 6.8%. Now this isn't as good as we can, what we can achieve with manual calibration, but it will improve. We estimate that the amount of entropy generated is approximately the fidelity times the number of bits from the quantum computer. Now this is a lot more than Scott Aronson will tell you because he prefers more stringent assumptions than ours. Our approach will be published in an upcoming paper. To give a sense of the experimental data, I've plotted here data from sampling one of the circuits a million times. A million bit strings corresponds to a million ideal probabilities, and I've plotted the histogram of these probabilities scaled by the Hilbert space dimension. The orange histogram is the experimental data, and the solid orange line is the idealized distribution of sampling with fidelity equal to the linear cross entropy fidelity of those bit strings. As you can see, the data matches the prediction quite well. The green and blue histograms are from simulations. The green is fidelity one and blue corresponds to uniformly random bit strings. So the next steps for this project are to achieve experimental parameters that would allow truly certified randomness which would be something like 53 qubits, 14 cycles at a fidelity of 0.8% and a sampling rate of five kilohertz. Finally, I'd like to end with the major open problem left by our protocol, which is, can the verification be made less expensive? In our protocol, verification takes time exponential in the number of qubits and tuning the circuits to make verification easier necessarily also makes it easier for an adversary to cheat the protocol by simulating the circuits instead of sampling them. This is the main difficulty we're currently encountering in our implementation. Nevertheless, this might be one of the, might be the very first application of a near-term quantum computer. That's all. Thank you.